Taoiseach, I, I'd made it very clear that I think it's really quite shameful what people like Ursula von der Leyen and uh, some in the European Union, some European states have done to essentially give carte blanche to Israel to commit war crimes against the people of Gaza and indeed their failure to hold that regime to account for years for its crimes against the Palestinian people. But I want to uh, refer to a particularly disturbing case that has come to light in that regard in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, I, my office was contacted yesterday by a woman called Courtney Carey, who was sacked yesterday uh, because, according to the C COO of a company, Wix, Israeli-owned company based in Grand Canal Dock, uh, it's an IT company, I think it does web website uh, building, sacked her because she'd put posts, she's, according to her, quite mild posts, where she essentially laid the responsibility for the current violence in Gaza uh, on the shoulders of the Israeli government for its apartheid policies, its occupation and its siege of uh, Gaza. And she was sacked for that, with the COO telling her apparently to say those things meant was tantamount to justifying terrorism. Uh, she reports very worryingly that since October the 7th, the company through inner channels to the employees was telling them it would be in their interests to put up pro-Israeli uh, content and posts uh, in company updates and so on. It, she said, report disturbingly, that it would be best only to show some of those posts to people who looked European. Uh, and um, uh, she's now lost her job, thank okay? You, this you, is definitely. shocking behavior. And I understand, or you could maybe check, that this company is IDA supported uh, company. Will you condemn what Wix have done to Courtney uh, and investigate this treatment of an employee? I want to thank the, um, uh, the deputies for, for, for their comments. Um, I, I think it's important that when we engage with our uh, European partners, 27 member states in the European Union, that we always try to understand uh, the positions that they're coming from. We may disagree, uh, we may criticise each other, uh, we may compromise, um, but shouting, pointing the finger, um, that really doesn't work uh, in, in, in international affairs uh, or uh, in forums uh, such as the European Council. Uh, and we do have to understand where different countries are coming from. Uh, every country sees the situation in the Middle East through its own historical experience. We certainly do. Uh, it's one of the many reasons why we identify with the Palestinian people and support their quest uh, for statehood, um, because we see certain parallels uh, between what Ireland experienced uh, and what they experience. Um, but we also need to understand that other European countries might see it differently, uh, given the horrendous treatment uh, of Jewish people uh, in Europe for centuries, uh, culminating uh, in the events of the 1930s and the 1940s, uh, causing so many to flee uh, to Israel, their ancestral homeland. And we also have to bear in mind um, that many countries much more recently have been at the receiving end of very serious Islamic terrorism, um, killing people uh, on their streets. Um, the attack on the music festival in Israel was not the first Islamic terrorist attack uh, on a music event. It's happened in France, it's happened in Britain, it's happened in other places too. And we need to understand that other people will, will see things in a somewhat different way than we would. Uh, if we can't do that, uh, then we're not going to persuade anyone of anything. Um, we'll just be taking an isolated position. Uh, but what I will do on Thursday and Friday, as I've done in the past two weeks, is to bring the Irish perspectives to the table, um, to say that uh, Europe cannot have double standards when it comes to human rights. Uh, we cannot say one thing about uh, President Putin's actions in Ukraine and then take a totally different position uh, when it comes to um, violations of international law happening in other places. Uh, and also, I think we need to consider the impact on Ukraine. Ireland and a num num number of countries have done a lot of work uh, to say to countries in Africa and Latin America and Asia that what's happening in Ukraine uh, is an imperialist war. It's Russia trying to re-establish uh, its old empire. And it should be seen as that. And that's why we ask people in Latin America and Africa and Asia to stand with Ukraine uh, in defending its independence and its, and its democracy and its sovereignty. That gets a lot harder uh, for Ukraine um, when people in uh, the global south uh, see different standards being applied. And we have to think um, not just of what's right, but also of, of Europe's interests uh, in terms of um, victory in Ukraine uh, and how uh, Russia will exploit what's happening in the Middle East 
uh, to pursue its imperialist course. And that's a big concern that I have and a point that I'll strongly be making uh, in Brussels during the week. Um, some of the deputies uh, raised the case of an employee of our former employee of Wix, um, not aware of the case, uh, don't know the details or the facts, and before coming to any judgment on anything or condemning anyone, I would always wish to know the facts uh, and hear all, all sides of any case. Um, but certainly, uh, under Irish employment law, it is not okay to dismiss somebody because of their political views, um, uh, and certainly would uh, believe that to be wrong. And I'd encourage the um, woman concerned to seek advice, whether it's from the WRC uh, or the trade union or a solicitor, because it may well constitute uh, wrongful dismissal. Um, and there are remedies uh, that would then apply. Uh, but of course, uh, all the facts would need to be known before we know what the outcome would be. Um, Deputy Durkin talked about the need for uh, one authoritative body uh, in a world that worked better. The United Nations would be uh, such a body. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a body that is trusted, accepted, and respected by everyone. And that's the real dilemma and the real shame, I think, in the situation. And I think just in relation to the issue of expelling ambassadors and closing embassies, um, I would say the same as I said when people called for the Russian ambassador to be expelled and the Russian embassy to be closed. Uh, even countries at war have diplomatic relations, uh, have diplomats, have ambassadors, sometimes of embassies. Uh, we do need to keep, we do need to keep uh, channels of communication open. Um, it'll be of no advantage uh, to uh, Palestine uh, in uh, throwing out the Israeli ambassador. It'll be no, no, no advantage to Ukraine uh, in throwing out uh, the Russian ambassador. Uh, I don't believe, um, but it would cut us off. Um, we need to be able to talk to countries, particularly where countries where we have citizens uh, and where we have people, uh, and we need to make sure that they're protected.